Ginger, welcome. What are the most pressing challenges in meeting the housing needs of diverse communities? And I suppose with that, what are the opportunities? Uh, the challenges, unfortunately, are numerous. Uh, they are the same kind of macroeconomic challenges we face collectively. They are interest rates and the consequences of folks who have purchased homes and now have low interest rates, locking out people who might want to go purchase homes, um, but who are also facing higher interest rates and therefore higher cost of entry if that home is available. Uh, it is the mismatch between wages and affordability. Uh, it is you know, more broadly, the consequences of zoning and what is happening in it at the local level in terms of preventing potential new building um, and the use of parcels of land in a way that is additive to what is foundationally the issue in our housing economy, supply. Uh, fortunately, uh, while there is inadequate supply, there is also consensus around the fact that there is inadequate supply. There is a common understanding that we are somewhere between four to six million million units, excuse me, short of housing in this country and that we need a um, collective motivation to address those things. Unfortunately, <laughs> that, that uh, consensus may stop at identifying the problem, though, you can't fix a problem that you don't agree exists. And so I am heartened to see that that opportunity has presented itself. And I'm so excited to be part of the solution of solving it. Talk to me, if you would, about what Amherst is doing specifically to prioritize and support residents' needs. Uh, so Amherst has a long history of being very focused on delivering the service of housing, because we do believe that so much of a person's opportunity and access is caught up in their that the location of their home, the quality of their home, et cetera. Uh, but we also recognize that as a, as a landlord um, through our operating platform, Main Street Renewal, that we have an obligation to meet consumers where they are, and that we that comes with the responsibility of understanding that life happens. And so going back on our platform to 2017, we have had uh, a resource available to our residents. A, um, a group of social workers and program specialists, our, our CARES team, that is really focused on addressing individual needs in a very bespoke fashion. Um, and so if residents contact us and they explain their situation um, and, and we do what we can, to support them in maintaining their housing stability, anything from connecting to local resources to, in some cases, delivering our own resources, financial, certainly otherwise. And that focus on social emotional support and financial education and empowerment is really at the heart of what we try to deliver at Amherst. How are you measuring that social impact? And what do you think that other companies can learn from what you do? It's an interesting question about how you measure social impact, right? I think you can look at um, interactions. So in 2023, uh, we served through our CARES program something north of 3,000 residents who in a multitude of situations. So that is a metric. Uh, you could look at, um, particularly going back to the pandemic, the, uh, the amount of rent we forgave to ensure that people had that stable housing um, around the, the implications of the pandemic. Uh, and that's tens of millions of dollars. We could look at the investment we made in helping residents uh, uh, apply for rental assistance and the rental assistance they received through the federal government's $46 billion program. And that is north of 25 million dollars in resources that we were able to connect residents to to maintain that housing stability. Um, but myself, I what really sort of motivates me on this social impact journey is really those anecdotal stories. It is the family who, you know, a mother and daughter who, you know, both are, are leasing homes from us who get to be in close proximity and 
who get to have a home that is accommodated to meet a physical disability. It is a family who um, is facing a domestic violence situation and is able to relocate. It is a family that has seen a financial strife and we are able to support them. Those individual stories is really what matter. So of course we have to put metrics to it. Uh, and you know, I can, I can point to the, the value proposition that comes with the loss avoidance and credit loss mitigation that comes with investing in service in wraparound services. I think that there is a deep history and, and context around that through the foreclosure crisis that we can apply here. Uh, but I think we, it's important to not lose sight of what it means for that individual consumer and family. Ginger, thank you so much. Thank you so much.